Medved is the entrepreneur and the CEO of the crowdfunding platform, Our Crowd. He's with me from Jerusalem. So uh, it looks like, I mean, I can caveat this until the cow comes home, uh, but it looks like the uh, Netanyahu coalition is headed back for government. What will business make of it? I think business will be pretty much delighted when they look at it from an economic standpoint. Remember, uh, former prime minister and perhaps future prime minister Netanyahu has a degree uh, from MIT. He's been an extraordinary uh, economic leader in Israel, responsible for much of the privatization that happened, for the reform of the tax code, and for a very supportive environment in government for the technology juggernaut, which has pushed uh, Israel's economy forward. So my, my sense is that while Israel is part of the world economy and we suffer from inflation, our inflation rates are one half those of the US and Europe. Our growth rate is still up at 5%. It's more than twice the average of the developed countries. And in fact, the shekel is so strong that is the only traded currency that has actually strengthened against the dollar in the last 10 years. So I think we're s starting from a pretty good position, and I'm hoping that uh, the new government, if it's led by Netanyahu or if it's led by someone else, will help to strengthen that even further. We can't ignore, though, the social unrest. And I think back to 2011, 2012, when the issue was one of housing, which is, in, which is incredibly difficult and intractable, um, particularly in Tel Aviv, uh, but also el el elsewhere. Will, does Netanyahu make the disadvantaged a priority? And I'm thinking about the way in which he campaigned this time. A lot of his election stops were to those who'd lost out, basically saying, I can help you. Well, I, I think that's true. And if you look at, for example, the socioeconomic background of the Netanyahu block versus the Lapid-led block, uh, the Lapid-led block is basically the elites, the wealthier population, whereas Netanyahu is the darling of the underprivileged and the, the lower middle class and the working class. So, uh, and he understands that housing is a big issue, but you have to remember something. 70% of Israelis own their own houses today, which is a remarkable percentage. And while the housing prices went crazy, 19% increase last year alone. And mm -hmm. that bothers everybody. Look, I've got four you know, kids and they've got kids and you wanna make sure that your kids can get into this market. On the other hand, you have to come up with creative solutions. So I, I think that's gonna be very high uh, on the list on both the uh, housing costs as well as the overall cost of living. I, I read your article um, where you basically say, or an article where you, where you say, you know, look past Israel's bonkers politics. The economy is thriving. Um, to the large extent that, I, I, all right, I'm going to say it's taken me 25 minutes before I've used the phrase startup nation, which is probably an achievement when you talk <laughs> about the Israeli economy. It's such a cliche. Good, good but, for you, Richard. <laughs> well, I know, you know, but it, it's taken me that long before I've finally used it. But if you take the startup nation and you take the Israeli defense industries and you look at the groundbreaking work, whether it be on drones or uh, AI, is it still... Does it still have the cutting edge? Oh, it, it completely has the cutting edge. In fact, it's getting sharper uh, by the day. There are a couple of big developments that have changed in the last decade or so. First of all, the offshore gas and the energy economy has been very, very positive. And we just got a deal done with Lebanon to make sure that that doesn't stop in any way. And that's great. Also, when you look at what's going on between Israel and our neighbors in the Gulf, the Abraham Accords and the rapprochement and even, uh, you know, uh, efforts with other countries that aren't formally uh, at peace with Israel, I think the potential for economic growth as a result of these uh, contacts and uh, engagements is extraordinary. And in fact, the Minister of Economy of the UAE predicted a trillion dollars of economic impact over the next decade. Now, I'm not right. sure we'll get to that number, but it's going to be big. John, I am grateful for you. We'll talk to you more because I absolutely want to go into that further details. Danny Danon is with me. It.